I will now continue um, looking at the goodness of fit test statistic for Poisson regression. So we would like to test um, if a particular model that we are assuming really does fit the data or if you may want to um, extend our model and include maybe uh, more covariates in our model. We first of all look at um, another example. So I will first of all talk that through and then I will be discussing goodness of fit test statistics, so the Pearson chi-square test and the log likelihood ratio test. So we've got um, the example of a recall of stressful events, so example three. Um, and basically we would like to uh, first of all start with something simple again, a simple Poisson model without any covariates, but then extend this to um, uh, an example with covariates. So basically participants from a randomized uh, study were asked if they can recall any stressful events over the last, uh, in fact, uh, 18 months. And if yes, in which months? When, when did this particular stressful event happen? And um, we then wanted to look at um, the number of uh, stressful events that people were able to recall and look at their distribution according to these 18 months. So we had 147 stressful events recorded uh, in total. So the H0 hypothesis is that, first of all, we start with something very simple, uh, start with some, some very sort of conservative um, attitude, conservative uh, assumption that these events are uniformly distributed over time. Um, that basically means that H0 follows the equiprobable model, that all these probabilities across months are the same. So we have uh, an event occurrence of 1 over 18, so a particular can event can uh, occur in any given month. So that would be a percentage of 0.055, or in terms of percentage terms, it's 5.5%. Uh, so we would expect about just over 5% of all events to happen per month. Looking at uh, the actual count data, at the actual data that was recorded, so we've got first of all months, once uh, ranging from 1 to 18, and then we've got the actual count data, so the actual number of events that were recorded per month, um, and then the percentage that uh, relates to the, the actual uh, count variable. So we can already see that some counts are significantly or uh, are actually higher than 5.5% uh, and some are actually um, a bit lower than 5.5%. So just looking at the data, we may already conclude that there is some divergence between or discrepancy between the um, observed values and what we would expect to see based on our equiprobable model. Let's look at the evaluation of the Poisson model, uh, doing this more formally. So we would be using the Pearson chi-square test and the deviance or, or also called the log likelihood ratio test for Poisson regression. Basically both are goodness of fit test statistics and they basically uh, compare two models. One um, for the, the current model, the uh, model that we have at hand, so in this particular case the equiprobable model. And then we compare this model with this so-called saturated model, i.e. the model uh, that is um, yeah, larger, that is the saturated model, that is the model that fits the data perfectly and that explains all of the variability. That basically means we are comparing observed and expected frequencies. Mm -hmm. Looking at um, the Pearson and the log likelihood ratio test statistics, um, basically we, we say that if H0 is true, that means that if the equiprobable model actually holds, then we would expect overall the um, uh, a distribution of um, 147 times 1 over 18, so that we would expect um, yeah, um, an expected frequency of 8 point, just over 8 um, per month, basically. So we basically have one parameter uh, model that we would like to estimate, and that would be just over 8 events per month. So we can compare the, the count um, or the observed counts with the expected count per month and we can see that um, obviously yeah, some counts are uh, quite a bit higher than maybe eight and some uh, counts per month are quite a bit lower than, than eight than what we would expect. Um, looking at the Pearson chi-square test, it allows us basically to compare the observed and the expected frequencies and you may have come across the Pearson chi-square test um, when testing associations between two categorical variables. So it's the same uh, principle effectively here. We are trying to compare observed and expected frequencies and basically it allows us to look at the sum of the standardized residuals uh, in squared terms. And we can calculate this particular um, statistics uh, for, uh, for our example. Um, so basically you just have to plug in the numbers 
um, for each cell basically so we've got uh, 18 cells in total and uh, for this particular example recall of stressful events we will have the um, uh, chi-square test statistic of 45.4 and we now need to compare this to the value from a chi-square distribution so basically the assumption is that if h naught is true if indeed the equiprobable model holds then um, this uh, test statistic will follow the chi-square distribution so we can compare it with the distribution from the chi-square tables for example so for that we need to have the degrees of freedom which is defined as the number of cells minus the number of model parameters which is the number of cells is 18 so capital C minus the model parameters here in this particular case for the simple model is just one because we have got only alpha that we need to estimate so we've got the chi-square test statistic of 45.4 with basically 17 degrees of freedom so 18 minus 1 at the 5% significance level looking at the chi-square table value we've got 27.6 from the table and also we have got that uh, basically associates with a p-value of uh, really rather small 0.001 so that means the the um, the value we would then reject um, h naught based on the, those um, characteristics conclusion is that um, there's strong evidence that the equiprobable model does not fit the data so just looking at the actual data from our table we already looked at observed and expected frequencies and we already saw some discrepancy but exactly um, how um, significant the discrepancy is the discrepancy between observed and expected values we can then formally test this for example here with the Pearson chi-square test and we concluded that the difference is rather large so it, it's not just due to chance um, and that the data does not follow the equiprobable model so we have to do probably something else to improve uh, this particular model likewise um, looking at the log likelihood ratio test statistics for Poisson regression we can now um, also use this test statistics to again um, compare observed and expected frequencies um, so basically uh, the formula here gives the log likelihood ratio test statistic and you can plug in the numbers the observed and the expected frequencies and that is again a measure of the fit of the model so the goodness of fit test statistics and again similarly to before if um, H naught is true then actually this particular log likelihood test statistics would follow a chi-square distribution so again we need to define the degrees of freedom which again is the number of cells minus the number of model parameters so again it's 17 for our example and the um, um, log likelihood ratio test statistics for our example is 50.8 if you if you plug in the numbers on 17 degrees of freedom so we've got a p-value of less than 0.001 again and we would again re re reject H naught so basically in the same way as with the Pearson chi-square test so the conclusion is again the same there is strong evidence that the equiprobable model uh, does not fit the data so we basically now need to use this information to um, take this forward and to think about um, possibly fitting a, a more sophisticated model maybe including another covariate to allow for uh, differences between number of months just a couple of remarks about the Pearson chi-square test and the log likelihood ratio test they are basically asymptotically um, equivalent um, so basically um, they are relying on a, on a large sample um, and you would expect them to be uh, um, giving you basically the same or very similar results um, if they are not similar this could just simply be an indication that the large sample um, approximation uh, doesn't actually hold um, and also uh, just to note that for a fixed degrees of freedom so when n increases so for, for larger samples that the distribution of the Pearson chi-square test usually converges to the actual um, chi-square distribution uh, and also it does it more quickly than the log likelihood ratio test and uh, also to note that the chi-squared uh, approximation is usually relatively uh, poor or not appropriate um, if any of the expected cells are less than five.